Welcome to the Animal Training Fundamentals Podcast, where we have fun with practical application and we get mental with the science of behavior. Put them both together and you get results. Solutions for your behavior problems and the tools you need to achieve your training goals. I'm your host, Barbara Heidenreich. Let's talk training. Hey, everybody, it's Barbara Heidenreich at AnimalTrainingFundamentals.com, and I've got Annetta Peterson from the Copenhagen Zoo with me. Hi, Annetta. Hi, Barbara. Good to have you here. And we are going to talk about some really amazing training I've seen at the Copenhagen Zoo, horse training. Yay. All right. So let me start off first with a question. Tell me about the horses you have at the Copenhagen Zoo and maybe a little bit about their history. Right now, we have five horses at the zoo. We have an old one from, she's from 2001, so she must be 18 years old. Her name is Maggie, and it's, it means magic in English. And uh, she have a blue eye and a brown eye, and I think that might be one of the reasons why, and maybe because her mother's name is also something about magic. She's been clicker trained since she was two, three years old, so she can do a lot of stuff. Then there's her mother, her name is Trulle. And she's the oldest one. She's from 1996. And we started clicker training her in 2019. So you can teach old animals new tricks. Then we have a horse that comes from another zoo. His name is Grøndal. He's actually named after one of our veterinarians because that zoo, he came down to help from time to time. And that's, they loved him so much. They said, the next animal born in this zoo, we're going to name after you. And that was that horse. <laughs> so, uh, and he's from 2005. He came to Copenhagen in 2009, which we thought was quite funny because he has the same name as our uh, veterinarian. And then we have another female called Frida. She's born here and her mother is also Trulle. And she's born in 2009. She's a mix of something close to a Shetland pony and an Icelandic horse. And then we have the smallest one, a very, very small horse, very cute one, who's called Krome, and she's from 2001. So how did training all the horses even get started at Copenhagen Zoo? And I know we haven't talked about yet what these guys can do because it's pretty cool, but what, what inspired people to start training the horses? Well, the first one that was trained was Maggie, and she was trained from about 2004, five or something like that. And that was when, when uh, positive reinforcement training really started to hit in the zoo. We started training a different kind of animals, and of course, the domestic animals was easy goes. It was started training by one of our keepers at that time, and she taught her different things like natural behavior stuff, like waving the tails to show how they chased flies away and, and shaking her head and go backwards using a clicker. She was one of our first clicker trained animals, actually. I should tell you the story of our horses management in, in the zoo. Because we have a very old zoo. Our, our zoo is from 1859. The oldest picture I have of horse riding, pony riding in the zoo was from 1912. Very old picture of, girl, uh, of uh, children on uh, ponies. And then I found another picture when we finished doing the pony rides. It was about 2009, I think. So it was nearly 100 years of pony rides. Wow. What we had to do when we had pony rides was we need to have lots of horses because we had to shift the horses. It was a lot of work caring for those horses, walking the horses. We, do, we don't have a big area for the horses at the zoo. And we had about 20 horses because we needed that for the pony rides. But in, in Denmark, we have a law that prevents us from having horses in such small areas. So we had to send them out to a place in the country that we have, went on vacation for three, four months a year. And then we have to drive horses back and forth from Copenhagen. So they kind of shifted being in the country and being at the zoo. So there was a lot of work having these horses and it was very expensive. We also thought that we've been doing that for 100 years. I mean, maybe we should start thinking in, in new ways uh, of presenting our horses or or telling about the horses. So we uh, decided to have a brainstorming meeting uh, at the zoo. We called in the management, we called our enrichment coordinator, we called all the keepers, 
and myself working with the animal training. And we, we should sit down and see what can we do with these horses? How, how can we present the horses in a new way? And a couple of evenings before the meeting, I tried to get inspired by something. So I went in on YouTube. I googled some horse training. Suddenly, I came across this video of some big Finnish guys doing agility with horses. And it was so cool. I just liked it so much. I crossed my fingers and brought the video to the meeting and sat and waited till it became my turn. And I showed the video and people loved it. I mean, that was a perfect way of showing horses what horses can do. And it was enriching for the horses. It was enriching for the keepers. It was, as I say, a new way to show horses to our guests. And uh, we could involve the guests in the agility too, having them in working with the horses, but also trying to, to run the agility course after the horses had done it. So we thought that was so much creative stuff to do in I love it. We had to cut down on the numbers of horses. So we picked five horses, five very different horses. When you look at them, they look very different. They are very tall, spotted horse and very small painted horse. So there's all kinds of horses to kind of show the variety of what horses can look like. One of the reasons why we liked the agility too was one of the questions I've always asked was, why is it that we always treat our horses differently? than any other animals in the zoo. So when we do the, the pony rides, we often use negative reinforcement because that's how we work with horses. And we were like, yeah, but you know, we use positive reinforcement with tigers and, and sea lions. So, so why should we not do it with the horses? And the agility was a way to work with our horses in a new way. That was one of the great things with it. Tell me about some of the agility behaviors that you taught the horses to do? We decided on, on five different things because we don't have a big area for the horses. So we had to pick some things, some obstacles that we wanted in there, some different kinds. We have a teeter-totter. We have two different kinds, but one of them is pretty new, but we wanted the teeter-totter because that's pretty cool and that's very good exercise for the horse. And then we have a jump over two or three locks, one bigger and two smaller ones. We have a tunnel. We have slalom like weaving poles yeah weaving poles we have a balance beam with a cut up tire on top of it so people can see how good horses actually are at balancing on uneven surfaces and also all, all the obstacles that we decided to have was for the purpose of training the horse's muscles and the balance and the physiology. So the, the horses would also gain from it, both mentally, but also physically. I think that's a good point, because when we look at behaviors like that, sometimes people interpret them as just entertaining behaviors or tricks. But in fact, you were looking at them as really having a purpose for the horse as well, not just as something to show the guests. Yeah, absolutely. Because now that we wasn't going to ride the horses, we had to exercise them in another way. Otherwise, they would just be standing in there on, on a flat surface doing nothing all day. So, And also what we did was we, we made a big hill in one of the ends of the enclosure, a really big one. So the horses could go up there and have an overview of the whole children's zoo, which they do pretty often. And it would be exercise to go up and down the hill too. And didn't you utilize another horse expert that really specializes in this to get some more ideas? Yes, we did. We started looking on the internet for more and more knowledge and experience about horse agility because there's so many different kinds of agility. And often when you go to, to YouTube and, and look at it, it's with equipment on the horses, which we don't want it to use. We want it for the animals to be absolutely free. Sometimes you see people using whips and or commands or negative reinforcement, even on agility. And we wanted it to be totally positive reinforcement training. I, I knew a, a person in Germany. Her name is Christiane Müller. I've been to some of her seminars. She, she doesn't do seminars herself, but she's so much into clicker training and she has been inviting some big names to Germany to create attention on clicker training in the early days, many years ago. And I contacted her because our team was going to Germany on a field trip. So I contacted her to hear, are there somebody in Germany doing positive reinforcement training with horses? 
And she says, yes, I have a very good friend up in Bremen, a German city. She gave me her, uh, her email address and I looked her up on the internet and I found she had a website called the Pferdewippen, which means a horse teeter totter. And I looked at it, it's all on German, in German and I'm not so good at German. <laughs> but I finally managed to get a Skype meeting with her and we talked and we were totally on the same page. And she's doing seminars and workshops. The team went to Germany and they met with her down there and they did a lot of video filming and they came back and they were so happy that they met her and she was so good. So I contacted her and said, should we do a horse workshop, horse training workshop in Copenhagen Zoo and she was all in for it and she came and we did a weekend two days of training horses for agility and it was so cool and uh, everything just went crazy after that. I think one of the things I saw when I visited one time that I thought was just amazing I know you just mentioned the teeter-totter but the way you guys do the teeter-totter is really fascinating it's not a horse just walking over a teeter-totter it's very different maybe you want to share exactly what the team does on the teeter-totter with the horse. What they actually teach them is to stand on the teeter-totter and by using their own body weight they move the teeter-totter up and down like like if you were rocking on evil plate or something like balance board. We also have a balance board that came later. That was our newest creation. A balance boards that people use when they have to strengthen their ankles and their muscles. We made one of those for, for the horses, but we, we teach the horses to go on the teeter totter and, and move it up and down to work their uh, muscles in their backs and in their legs. If you look carefully, you can actually see all the muscles, all the tensions and how yeah they use all kinds of mus muscles when they, they are on the teeter totter. So that people can visualize it, you have a horse on either end of the teeter-totter, and sometimes it might be a horse on one end and a person on the other end of the teeter-totter. Yeah, and we even invite children in with the horse and say, shall we see how many children goes to outweigh uh, one horse? And the children are crazy, and we can bring in about three or four children uh, to stand in one end, and then a horse on the other end, and they, the horse teeter-totter the children up and down and the thing is just great. And it's, it's another way to meet this animal on, on their level, I think. It's, yeah, much better. I love it. So fascinating. And, and again, very creative and different way of interacting with these animals and based in positive reinforcement. Yeah, and the animals love it. They even use the agility course when we are not there. They, they love to see the tortoise. Yeah. Oh, I love it. I love it. So the equipment that you talked about it sounds like it's not very expensive or something that they can just build in-house, right? Absolutely. It's really inexpensive. We build it ourselves, our carpenter and the keepers at the zoo. No big deal. Anybody can do it. It's just some, some plates and some wood and yeah, a saw and it's really easy. And then we put rubber mats on top of everything. So the, we create a good surface for, for the horse. And what kind of impact do you think this has had on the horses? Have you seen any difference in them with the training program when you think about before when it was pony rides versus now doing agility? Absolutely. A big difference. The horses are super friendly. We have hay nets close to the fence. So when the horses comes to the fence to eat hay, the children can reach out and touch the horses and they never bite. A lot of horses bite. I had one guest coming up to me only a couple of weeks ago, and he said, why are your horses so nice? They never bite. And I haven't really thought about it. And I was like, well, I guess it's like because we treat them with respect. I mean, they have no reason to bite. If they don't want to be petted, they can go away. If they don't want to train, they can go away. We never force them to do anything. And we know that if you respect animals, why should they bite? So they don't. And also we can actually take the horses out for a walk in the zoo without any equipment on it. Oh, that's very cool. <laughs> yeah, it is. I mean, and what I like about it, of course, you can say this, that could be a safety issue. But what I really like about it is that it strengthens the, the trainer's attention to the animal. I mean, if you walk a horse on a leash, you tend to kind of just drag an animal around and don't pay much attention to what the animal does and how they feel about the people they meet, the experiences they get. But if you don't have anything to hold on to, you really have to watch this animal's body language and you have to be in its head all the time. And that makes good trainers. 
Yeah, I love that. And I guess maybe that's another thing we should mention when they do run the agility, they are running alongside the keeper. So they do have that reinforcement history as well that it makes it worthwhile for them to stay with the keeper. So they do already have that experience, which probably also helps with making it more likely that they want to walk alongside the keeper if they're walking with them outside the enclosure as well. Yes, yeah, staying with the keeper and keep calm and do nothing is actually the behavior that we start with. And it's the behavior that we reinforce the most. And we do it all the time. Like we just stop, wait, the horse just supposed to stop and just stay with the keeper, do nothing. And it's get reinforced. Wow. It's heavily reinforced behavior. And I even have videos of, uh, and I've seen it tons of time, we have a, a place in the zoo where we have a dirt instead of concrete. The horses, they just love this path where they can do a run. And I've seen the keepers run with the horses down there and the horses go all crazy and just jump and kick their hind legs. And as soon as the keeper stops, boom, the horse stops immediately. Wow. And it's so crazy. It's, it's, it's fantastic. Yeah. yeah, they obviously have spent a lot of time training and done some very good training with those horses. And I do remember watching them run through their sessions before in the past. Over the years, I've seen a few different sessions, and I love watching them work those specific behaviors. There's a nice session I have that I'll put a video up of this where the keeper kind of runs through just some some nice behaviors in the middle of the area where the horses hang out. It's not necessarily running through the agility course where it's just little behaviors like that, where it's maybe raise up on your hind legs, lay down, roll on your side, maybe do a little rolling in the dirt like you're taking a bath. Like you said, the shaking of the head, maybe a little pawing with a front hoof. There's there's quite a number of behaviors that these horses have on cue. It's, it's really astonishing the number of behaviors that the horses have. And the agility is just another one of them. And then the keeper also brought the horse up to the fence line and is reinforcing mm. the horse for standing there calmly while the children interact with the horse. And so all those behaviors, as you mentioned, are reinforced so that the animal does learn to have good reinforcement history for hanging out with people and being calm. So I love that the that the horses don't feel the need to bite people and that you don't have to have a double fence when guests come to visit the horses like you do see at some facilities where it, you, you would think the children's zoo is the place where guests get to come up close to the animals, but a lot of places are becoming situations where it's it's look but don't touch. And I have to admit, I'm one of those people that usually enjoys going to children's zoo because I do get to touch. And so it's great that people can do that with your horses. What I would like is to mention the name of this horse person that came and helped us do the agility. Her name is Nina Steigerwald. And you can see her website, pferdewippen.de. A lot of cool stuff she does. There's, even though you don't understand German, she has a lot of videos and also videos that shows muscle tones and how good these horses must be physically. Another behavior that we have also done with the horses is taking a big tractor tire, laying on the ground and ask the horse to step up and go around in a circle on the tire. And that's also very good the way they move their body, their balance and their awareness of all four legs. And, and horses are really made to do this. And it's ama amazing to see how agile they actually are and, and how well equipped they are to walk on these uneven surfaces. We, we tend to protect them too much from walking on variable surfaces, but, but actually they're made for it. And, and they're really good at it. Like goats, I mean, they're really good at it. That's fascinating. It's a, And again, a very different way to think about horses in our facilities and expanding their potential. Yeah, I think so. And makes ha horses happy. Also, when I see the keepers pass the fence, to the horse enclosure, the horses always calls for the keepers. Aww. They see them immediately through <laughs> a crowd of people. Ah, the power of positive reinforcement. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. <laughs> and, and who are those fabulous keepers that those horses are calling to? Who's training those horses? We have right now six people. The people that have been there the longest time is Nikolai and a girl we call Krisa. Then we have Rosa and Maria and and then we have a guy that's been around for quite a while, Daniel, who is not hired staff right now, but he will hopefully be in the future. But he's done a lot of the training, too. Well, they've done an excellent job. That's for sure. All right. I think that was really fascinating stuff about horse training. I'm going to be sure to include links to the resources that Anetta mentioned. 
And perhaps, Annetta, you have some cool events coming up where people can see and learn from you about animal training. Would you like to share them with us? Of course I will. It will happen in Europe, so it's far away from the U.S., but we have an animal training course for IASA, the IASA Academy, and it's in Athens, and it's in October. I will be teaching that along with uh, Kirsten Andersen Hansen, who also is working in Denmark at the Southern University of Denmark. And we will have Jim Mackey from London Zoo teaching that course too. And we are all three a part of the EASA Animal Training Working Group. You have some events in Holland, I think, too, coming up, right? In spring? That's right. We have uh, two conferences very close to each other. We have the EASA Welfare Forum Conference, which is all about animal welfare and Just after that, two days later, we have the ABMA conference in Europe, which lasts for about four days. So I think you can go to Europe and you can join two conferences in a week. How about that? Excellent. I think we all should be there. (laughs) Okay, Annetta. Well, I think this was a fascinating topic and I'm sure people have learned a lot from it and hopefully we'll go back and think differently about training horses in zoos. Thank you so much, Annetta. Thank you for having me. All right. We'll look forward to talking to you again soon. Okay. Let's talk about three tips for your training toolbox. I got some great ideas listening to Annetta. How about thinking about training any behavior that you do on a lead off lead and thinking about trying it first in a safe area, of course, but think about how it helps you increase your sensitivity to your animal. It's going to make you a better trainer. Here's tip number two. How about brainstorming some new ideas for your animals? Now, it doesn't have to be a horse. Maybe it's some other type of animal that you work with. But think about some of those things that you heard Annetta talking about that they train their horses to do. Some of those behaviors may have been for educational purposes, but a lot of them were really about impacting the physiology of the animal that they were working with. So really get creative here because you could do something that's really important for the animal, but also has a really good purpose for your education educational programs as well. All right, and here's tip number three. How about reinforcing an animal for doing absolutely nothing? We forget that an animal just hanging out and behaving calmly next to you is an important behavior. I know I said it's doing nothing, but it actually is really doing something very, very important. And it's really easy for us to forget that that's something we should be reinforcing. And I love how Annetta said that that's the first thing that they train. Just stand here next to me calmly and you'll get reinforced for doing that. So think about that as your tip number three to add to your training toolbox. There you go. So if you like what you heard this week, just remember you can go to animaltrainingfundamentals.com, pick a membership option, and you can enter the code TRY10DAYS and you get access for 10 days for just $1. All right. I look forward to talking training with you next time. If you liked what you heard today, visit AnimalTrainingFundamentals.com for more quality content on animal training. You'll find courses, community, and extensive video examples from my consulting work around the world. We'd love to have you join our force-free family.